Hey, Les. Hey, Ange. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. You look good. Why are you all dressed up? Where are you going? Well, you know, I just had to represent because we have a special guest today. <laughs> so I wore my aluminum foil. <laughs> and <it's> not- <laughs> And, Wait, it looks like you're wearing lame. <laughs> Listen, I'm a child of the 60s, so I can do that. <laughs> how is, Welcome how to is another the episode of Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn, everybody. Brooklyn! <laughs> it's so good to be back in the building. We have this amazing guest today. Um, I just want to really quick tell you how um, I came to know Akron, Mr. Akron Watson. Um, he was in a play. He played the role of Mr. in the North Carolina Theater's production of The Color Purple. And... He was such a masterful, like beyond, beyond actor. You know, when you get mad at people like, um, like um, what's her name? Sandy Duncan. I can, ne- like after Roots, I just, I didn't have any, <laughs> any, I was so mad at her. It never Why went away for what, she did, for what she yes, did to yes, Kissy. Yes. Yes, it never okay. went away. Okay. She was too good an actor. So anyway, this did not happen with Akron. It did not happen, though he was that amazing in his role. He has such a sweet disposition, quiet, although I don't think he's really quiet. He seemed quiet. And but when he spoke, it was always um, with uh, levity and with um, just uh, a a real maturity, um, because not everyone is. And um, and so I don't know how you came to find out that we had a podcast, but I know I gave you the card because I've been giving everybody a card. And um, I think you went away, you went to lunch and then you came back and you told me you're interested. And I kind of challenged you on um, mm-hmm. on a few things before we said yes. So I'm going to stop it there because the rest will come up as we go into the interview. Um, and Akron, would you please um, introduce yourself Welcome. Tell our audience a little bit about you? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Akron Lanier Watson. And um, I love saying Lanier because I don't get a chance to say that that often. We love um, hearing it. We love hearing <laughs> it. <laughs> it's, just be- it's just because, you know, it's my middle name and it's not really like my professional name. Like you said, I'm an actor. Mm-hmm. And so my professional name is just Akron Watson, but here today i just am loving that i can say linear because this is not really about acting but it is kind of about acting but (laughs) i guess we'll get into that when we talk but yeah i'm an actor a singer and um i can tell you how i found out about your podcast it's because Mm -hmm. you are fine and so i was trying to figure (laughs) out i was trying to figure out how to talk to you (laughs) and so this is my goodness (laughs) And so I. Uh, <laughs> you mean whenever I hugged on you, that was. <laughs> you know how touchy I was, feely I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> and so I, went to, I, I just thought that you were really attractive. And so I was like, I cannot talk to her. And so you had a car <laughs> at your station. And so I looked at it and I was like, oh, her friend is attractive too. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but yeah, that's how I'm here. <laughs> well, so. that's, and, well, that's and, great. And I'll tell you what what was a made it a yes for me. When we spoke, you had an interesting story to tell, oh, one yeah. that I had not, I had no experience with. So I thought it would be good to bring that to our audience. Yeah. The other thing um, that is um, special about our guest today, Ange, that I just thought about, and it actually prompted me to wear my Mylar shirt. (laughs) He's our first male guest. Yes. Yes, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, yeah. You're such a winner. We've had dynamic women, but um, 
we've also have an uh, a dynamic young man here. So I'm appreciative. Thank you for taking the time to be here. I know you're busy. Yes, but I made it in. I'm so grateful to be here as the first Thank male you. guest. Thanks so, for having me. So can you tell me, can I call you Lanier? Because you don't hear about that. Can I? Is it okay <laughs> if I say Lanier or do you want me to say Akron? You can call me Lanier, yes. Can. Um, tell me what, you're an actor. Uh -huh. So what prompted that? How did that begin? Uh, my dad and my uncle, who was um, a character. And um, <laughs> and then my pastor, who was uh, like my mentor, and then just various men in my life who were just doing it in one way or, or another. Um, and then watching Will Smith and Fresh Prince before mm -hmm. he started slapping people. And <laughs> it was, God, I can't believe that. And then just, <laughs> I can't believe it. He, he slapped one, my... one guy and now he's slapping now people. He's slapping OMG. People. He's he a slapper. Slap anybody in Philly and all of a sudden he he's he <laughs> Here's my comedian right there. Here's my comedian. They said if he slapped somebody at the Oscars, you know he slapped somebody in private. You know he <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on that. That's true. I, I would I would agree. I would agree. If he stepped up and did it on camera, he must be doing it just all but anyways, and so that just it it made me feel so comfortable seeing those black men do that. My dad played um, Scrooge in Christmas Carol, and so oh, that was no way. Oh my god! Yeah, wow. yeah, that was it. That was it okay. for me. Just yeah, and he played it as my uncle, so I got a chance to see him play my <laughs> uncle at my church. My pastor yeah. directed me, and it, it was a wrap. Uh, but my pastor, it. yeah, my pastor was also a drama teacher, and so he kind of guided my career from like really young. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. Where did you grow up? Dallas, Texas. I left Dallas in when I was 29. This is where my story gets unique because like I left Dallas at 29 and then moved to New York straight from Dallas because I was in a show. I was casting the show and it was like a co-production and it was this big commercial musical. So I went from Dallas to New York and had an apartment and my career took off like that. I went oh, from like, that's wonderful. Yeah, I went from being in the ensemble to being like on Broadway in like six months. And then what? And yeah, and then I booked my first lead or like, well, really ensemble on Broadway like a year after that. And then I booked an even bigger lead a year after that. And my career was just like, bow, 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 bow. Oh wow. my gosh. Wow. How was that? Yeah. Were you like mature enough to handle it? Do you think this is in your in your um, mm -hmm. reading of it, not your mm -hmm. mother's in your reading of it? Oh yeah, that like, you were? Yeah, like, ugh, no, absolutely not. Absolutely. <laughs> ugh. Wow. Know. Yeah, it must have been something being like a young thirty something be living in New York City from Dallas, which is different in itself. It and was and doing what you do with the adoration of the crowd and all of that stuff. Man, mm -hmm. that must be fascinating. And I the can't groupies even imagine and that life. groupies and stuff. Yeah. It was yeah, it was groupies on groupies, which was interesting because they were nerds because it's theater, you know, and, and so <laughs> like it was that it was that, but like also just feeling like my whole life I, I had only made a certain amount of money, so my financial situation completely changed, mm -hmm. and and being being what I realized now was older. I didn't realize it at the time, but thirty honestly in my industry is older, mm. and wow. and. I didn't realize that I should have been making that money way, way back. And so okay. that sort of like threw me too. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's, um, that's <laughs> amazing. And then, so you lived in New York for how long? I've been here since, I've been here since uh, 2014. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're still here in New York. Um, okay. You, so, but you're visiting Dallas now. Cause I know. I am. I'm visiting mom. Um, I'm trying to get her to move up here because the career is still going well. Why not? But yes. like, um, I just want to have a change of scenery. Right. Right. So, so Lanier, when we spoke, <laughs> you mentioned again, I'm going to say I'm bringing this back. You said something about ageism and you mentioned it a little while ago as well about how mm -hmm. age how your career was affected by age. Now, 
as I see you, you're this young person who, you know, I would think is in the, you know, ripe time for stardom in the theater world or the television world or whatever. But tell me about that. That's not necessarily the case. I think that um, as I just try to really dig into what it could be, like when you're you, you talking about these isms, they kind of blur, mm-hmm. the lines get blurred because it really is about a, a person's like personal feelings about you. And a lot of times I think with ageism, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about like, oh, we don't want to include this person going to the party or getting invited to this or that because of his age. Mm -hmm. And so I think or their age or like socially, I think that is when it really started to like dawn on me. But because my life is spent so much with my career, like I am constantly just like in a theater, I'm constantly an artist. As the new artists come in, um, or I get you know thru- thrust into this group of young artists, I'm like, oh, I'm not invited to the party. Mm. Well, you know, like these very important mm. people are at the party. This this very important moment is happening, and mm-hmm. like socially, like I'm affected by this in a weird way. This is mm. new, and um, it started at the height of my career. Also, it's, it, you know, once I. I say the height, but like, who knows, right? It's just uh, exactly, when, I, yeah. when I got to a certain height, um, everyone in the ensemble was younger than me. And so that caused them to sort of like other me. You know, you're already the lead and you're older wow. than us. Mm. And, and, yeah, and so I call it getting other. Uh, mm. But that social aspect, I think in my industry, I could tell you a few stories where it really impacted me professionally. And please, if, please tell Long story long. I, oh, I, you know, that's, <laughs> you're in the right place. That's this is right. Ange. She yeah. makes a long story, a novel. Wait, I call it going off on a tributary and then I just come back around. I come back. A tributary. I, come back. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just feel it affected me so much. So I'll say this, that um, I, I almost got fired. And then um, the person uh, went, went even further. And so I ended up going to, there's an organization for like discrimination. I had to go to that organization as a state organization and be like, I feel like I'm being discriminated against. Wow. Um, in order to get it to stop, I had to type this long letter and give all these different in- instances mm-hmm. where wow. this person had discriminated on me because of my age. Wow. And, and this person was in a position to hire you for you to keep the, your, your position. It, it, what was happening was they were forming a group of people that was getting ever bigger because of their because of their shared commonalities. They were forming oh, a group of people that could like. Not part of that. Well, it, it it started as like the group of people just included you know cast members. Then it was mm-hmm. people in management. Then it was mm-hmm. people in casting. And there was like, mm-hmm. wait, what's happening? You know. What I'm wow. And and it all came back to you like, oh, you're just a little bit older than us. So we don't know if you agree with our politics, you know, and oh, it's like, wow. how about asking or just I mean, that's a lot to make assumptions about. And I'm having to assume, too. There's my there's my own set of assumptions that I have to assume. Sure. sure. I'm just not in on the party. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. Um that at your age, this is what's happening. It's kind of like um, you're in an you're in an in between. It is ageism, so I don't want to discount that. That's in fact what it is. Um, but it's at this in between age. This is what my my son used to say because um, I used to live with one of my parents, um, and so my son would say that I'm in between. Uh, Mom, you're not old. You're in between is what he used to say. So <laughs> um, so you're in this in between space mm-hmm. and you're you're already starting to feel it. Yeah. And I, it made me it opened my eyes because I don't I didn't see it until I got, you know, higher and older. Right. Um, right. And it makes me curious too, like, oh, what if one of those factors was missing? Would I still notice it? But yeah. oh, wow. I look okay, back wait, to like. There's a lot to unpack there. Hold okay. On. Hmm. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. So, because, you know, um, race is something that 
is a a good um it's it's a good um framing for <clears throat> isms right because we all know it so well right mm -hmm. we all know the, yeah. the issues around race so i'm going to use that analogy um mm -hmm. in in talking about ageism here and what you just said about whether you would have noticed that age was an issue right it's almost like if you were in the inn if you were in the in crowd mm -hmm. um you you wouldn't have noticed right because you mm -hmm. can be in the in crowd and notice that they treat other people differently mm -hmm. <laughs> but i think what i heard you say is that if you were in the inn um, if you were in the end, you don't know that you would have noticed that there are people who were on the outs because of ageism. Is that is yeah. that right? Yeah, because it it's like a catalyst. It's like a, a, a gate to me. Ageism is like a gateway drug mm -hmm. because it's so, 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 so accepted mm -hmm. and just yeah. like so just like very casual and that sort of like ism. It's just, it's hard to track, No, you know, people will lose track of it and they'll be like, I don't know why I don't like this person. It's like, because you wrote them off mm -hmm. six weeks ago. A long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Right. It's like they've become a caricature to these people and not, not an individual. I think so. And where it starts, I think, in our culture is what kind of fascinates me about it now because it's like, well, when did that become a thing and, and why does my generation fit and i'm talking about me and my friends and stuff why do we feel so in between you know my pastor used to talk to me a lot about i'm gonna bring up my pastor a lot because as i have like matured it's like oh if this dude was so right this oh, dude was so right about all these things it. and right. but i can't imagine what people might have might be experiencing if they didn't have that mentorship okay and wow. There's, there's a generation, especially in my industry, and I think we all know it and talk about it. They just, the mentorship is missing. Mm -hmm. The mentorship is like the internet or mm -hmm. TikTok or whatever. I don't uh, want to get like, yeah, that one to one mentorship. So, what are some of the things that your experience and your relationship with your pastor has helped you in this regard? It helps me to appreciate, I think, people of, of wisdom, whoever they may be and oh. however they may be. Mm -hmm. That I just right there that <laughs> right there okay keep mm -hmm. going i'll come back to that um and with that I just i'm sorry i'm laughing because it just seems so simple right like if somebody knows something that you don't know you yeah. better go ask them right. you know? <laughs> but, right. like, but that right. is, you would think it's simple but we all know from experience that it's really not there are many <laughs> reasons why we don't seek out knowledge and wisdom whether we have it or not, you know, there, there's, there's a lot there. Yeah. And, and well, I think that, um, I think it's wisdom that you gain when you start mm -hmm. recognizing it. It's like game <laughs> right, recognizing right. game. It's, you, it's, you, it's, it's not right? just information, it's wisdom. Right. You know? It's, right. it's now, that philosophical wisdom. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Man, wow. you are too deep. Okay. <laughs> Not too deep at all. No, I'm I'm totally joking because we yeah. love it. Leslie and I, deep is our middle name. We're we're just um um very interested in, in peeling back the layers yeah. of stuff. We're we're yeah. not surface yeah. people. So um mm -hmm. feel free to go as, as as deep as you would like into whatever whatever topic. So I just um, had a um a question. Mm-hmm the age related discrimination that i'm used to in the entertainment field is generally gender based women over 50 let's say mm -hmm. and it's this now revolution with um jane fonda and um you know the those buddy older women buddy shows mm -hmm. that are coming out a couple of them now but right. for historically it's been once you hit 45 or 50 as a woman in hollywood um mm -hmm. and we're not even talking about race um 
that's when you start seeing the roles um, going away for things like that. But you're saying that it's not necessarily gender based. Well, certainly not in your experience. So it's I think that's the board. I think that it's across the board and I, I think that, you know, it's it's a lack of like it's it's sort of gatekeeping, you know, it's just like mm-hmm. it seems like gatekeeping that as casting gets younger, as directors get younger, et cetera, they they're sort of like holding the gate open for, mm-hmm. you know, their mm-hmm. folks and, and, and othering everybody else. And that's it's so weird to me. I, I just think about the classical actors you know, or the people who are of my generation. I'm thinking of Denzel, who can show up on the big screen and in theater. You know, I would think that for someone with his chops who can um, come on stage and play Macbeth, you know, it's just, um, I would think that they would appreciate that level of wisdom and star power. Who's the they, uh, Les? Who is the they I'm that talking you're talking about? The casting people, or the directors, or the the backers, actually, the financial yeah. people. Well, I, I would... Sorry, go ahead, Macron. No, you you go, please. I was just going to say that in any in any ism, they're always going to let some people in. Some people always are allowed. Yeah, tokens. It's just you know. Mm-hmm not most people. And they use those people to say, oh, see, we're not like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) It's like, we're only letting a few people in. Well, I was just going to say that, like, um, the, this, the far as the day, it's like, how, who controls the day? And I think that the dollar controls the day, Mm -hmm. but I think that the dollars is misappropriated. I, I think that if you target a younger audience, of course, younger people are going to be but at some point, that trend doesn't hold up to like what's happening. Honestly, you know, I think that now we're reinforcing it, and we're reinforcing, we're we're reinforcing. It. I'm, I'm gonna say it wrong. Like we're reinforcing it in like all different mediums to where like even television and film is going younger mm-hmm. and younger and younger. Mm-hmm. But it's not a lack of production. I don't think you know when I think about writers and who could be writing the best whatever. I'm like, they're all probably over a certain age because mm-hmm. they have mm-hmm. the most experience. They have the most wisdom, right? Right. Um, but then you, wow. get, you get fluff content because they're feeding a younger audience and mm-hmm. using younger writers. And mm-hmm. Sometimes they're influencing oh, their wow. older writers yeah. to write younger. It's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, you have 30 year olds writing high school shows like I don't you just you can just write about your friends while you're writing about. (laughs) Yeah, back in the day. (laughs) Yeah, back in the day yesterday. (laughs) What are you doing? What are you doing? And and then but they're praying. It seems like they're praying on this younger audience like, oh, these are the people who will pay our bills. Right. And in many cases, that's correct, because these are the people who have a heavy presence in TikTok in social other social media so there's that advertising and then millennials have money now whereas when i was a millennial i drove a hoopty with a a, a milk crate holding up the she driver's sure seat did. in the back she sure you did. know so she it's sure a different did. age <laughs> wait wait this is when <laughs> five dollars you had a five dollar bill that's how much gas you got five dollars worth of gas yes. <laughs> leslie had a a, a baby blue Honda Accord hoopty and had a milk crate in the back to keep the back of the car drive the seat back. Now wait, stay up. It was broken, so I had to put something there. Less time while I'm driving, I'm (laughs) falling back. (laughs) You'd have to ask (laughs) Omar. But just stick your feet out, son. (laughs) Well, this is uh. It's 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 hard for me to um, absorb this as not as truth. It's not it, there's no there's no kind of uh, it's not that level. It is now kind of framing the way that I consume media. I was just knowing gonna what say, I know. I was just going to say, because now I'm going to view things through a different lens mm-hmm. and I'm going to have mm-hmm. my eye on it. Just like with your new red car, right. you see a lot more <laughs> red cars. 
you know, it's <laughs> Edward, let me let me tell you. We're trying to t- <laughs> Going to that car again. I just I just got a new car, right? Oh, congratulations. Let me tell you. It's the color of my lipstick. It's brighter than that. It sounds like you don't like it though. Why it's, I'm so nice. Who me or Leslie? It sounds Leslie. like Leslie doesn't like it. Leslie's a hater. I, I still can't wrap my mind Les- around Leslie's it. Leslie's a hater. Okay. I can't wrap my mind around it. And you won't either. Okay. Well, I mean it matches her hair and her skin. Let so. me let me let me tell you. It, it doesn't it, match her skin tone. It, it's got, Akron, she's got red Akron, in just, skin. Just, just you and me. Let's, let's, you know, just you and me okay. right now. Okay. All right. Okay. It okay. is a beautiful charger. Okay. You know a Dodge, Dodge Charger? Charger. You know Dodge Charger? Yeah. You know, yeah. Bow and Luke Duke? Okay. <laughs> this is the only... See, Leslie, you, need to, you <laughs> need, to, need to change that I prism. I need to ex- expand my... You need to change the. You, know, you need to change the prism. That's the only. That's the only way that you know those yeah, cars. That's expand. not the only. All right. How about the Almond Brothers? <laughs> I think. I think that red looks good, specifically on on brown skin, because we have red undertones, and Angela most definitely has red undertones. So. Thank you. And, and and what about the charger? Let's go back to the charger, not the color. What about the charger? Oh, he... oh, I mean, I think it's fast and you should be careful. And the police like to stop black people in chargers. So just that's what my, my thinking is. I know. I know. Be I'm hoping I'm hoping that my age will will be in my favor. They don't uh, seem to care sometimes. Now, they don't discriminate there. They It seems they don't. No discriminate. ageism there. No ageism with racism. You just black. All right. I have another question. Go. You seem like you you are an aware person and you seem like you have some sensitivity also. But have you thought about any solutions or any things that you can do? Mm. I mean, as a talented, well-known actor, you likely have a very long career ahead of you, God willing. What things can you and you won't be getting any younger, you know, <laughs> so what kind of things are you thinking about in terms of solutions? Because and I you think, probably are not the only one thinking about this. I don't think so. I don't think that I am. I think that I want to be the loudest voice because I think that as we move forward and we look at certain decisions that are being made politically and just like artistically and you know, of course, entertainment and all that stuff affects me, but like even some like CEOs and stuff are being chosen based on age. It's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's this weird obsession we have with someone either being too young or just mm-hmm. a little bit older mm-hmm. or whatever, um, instead of making the right choice. Mm-hmm. So I just want to be a really loud voice in terms of someone being right because they're right, um, whatever that means. So mm-hmm. um also, just in terms of like a story being right, uh, a story being interesting, a story being powerful and then not having to be super marketable. And that's something I feel like I can control. I can control what I write. Mm-hmm. I can control what I say, mm-hmm. what I do in my social mm-hmm. circles. Mm-hmm. I particularly don't try to other people. Right. Um, and that's mm-hmm. anybody. Yeah. Um, and I think that's hard for people to do, first of all. And so it's something I really, really, really work at. Um, and I just want to be a really loud voice for that so that you don't see what's coming from me based on who I am, but it's also what I appreciate and, and what I find to be like. Wow. That's powerful. why he's on our podcast, Les. That also sounds like something a mother would be so proud of. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you I know, it's you. like I raised him well, uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. She did. She's still around. So she did. She did. She did. She yeah. loved it. That's awesome. I love that. I um, I, I think that oftentimes people forget that change happens on an individual level. They, you know, they, they see sometimes things change, and it looks like there's always been um, this groundswell of um of activity to make this change happen but it's Mm -hmm. it starts with one person it starts with one person making a decision around that and i think that um you know now that your eyes are open 
to what's mm-hmm. going on. Um, you you said it right that that you can um, as an individual make decisions um, that will be more in line with your values around this. Um, I I wanted to ask you about whether um, you think some of the I I wouldn't call it othering, but some of the ways that they um, segregate you from others is because of your um, your uh, what's the word Um, your stature in the industry pedigree right (laughs) that Um, I I mean I think that's it's hard again like it's just hard to track I wouldn't really know Um, I try to. I try to look at the people who are segregated from me by choice and do what investigating I can. And Mm -hmm. then in the fight to be inclusive and not Mm -hmm. included, Mm -hmm. but just to be inclusive, Mm -hmm. um, I learn what I can, you know. Um, And most of the time, most of the time I find that age just gets written off. It just gets written off. It's just like... Oh, it just is what it is, you know. Yeah, it's just yeah. like mm. nothing, nothing people, to see here. Nothing, nothing to see. It's just yeah. It's an age old problem. Blah right. blah blah. All right. It's like, Especially- sometimes I feel like, and I'm going off on a on a little tangent, a little tributary here, but um, there's so much heaviness in the world, and I think sometimes people just want to find spaces where things are just easy, you know. Um, just I just want to be with people who I don't have to be concerned about whether they're going to treat me well whether they're going to respect me whether they're going to yeah um, yeah you know honor honor my 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 values (laughs) and it's it's sometimes just easier to um stay in your in your circle which I think Mm. is healthy sometimes but it's not the way to kind of live but again i'm constantly thinking about as a as a black woman how does that relate to how things play out in terms of our our race you know and um uh that that's what i use to whenever we talk about othering or segregation um it more broadly or um or inclusivity um i tie it back to well how does it feel being on this end or that end as a black person um you know so how do i um be more mindful of how i treat others who may i don't know um what the difference may be that that comes up um maybe younger you know there's ageism probably in the other direction too we have a president who's who's running for office who's how how old is he you know older than god uh, you you know what I mean? I, I mean, is it because he doesn't or there's a thought that younger people could not do as as good a job as as he can because it's all about um, uh, experience? Um, you know, not all experience is good experience, you know. Um, but anyway, it's uh, it's it's a really uh, something that uh, I I think um, we should all investigate on how ageism shows up. Um, and when you said that this is the topic, I'm like, yes, of course, we're gonna, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. you're on, you're on. So well, I will say that like, I, I just wanted to say this last thing that what, what started me down the path was realizing that Bernie Sanders was not in the runnings anymore at some point for president because he was too old and people thought that he was all right and when trump i remember you know what i mean it was like him and hillary and like people were trying to figure it out and his age became an issue mm-hmm. and you know now joseph biden is president <laughs> and so like we kind of see the repercussions of like and donald trump is running <laughs> you know it's like these guys are the same age <laughs> You know, they're the but same age. But, they're two, but, two years apart. That's the same age. But, but Donald's got more hair in the front. And well, so, like, <laughs> no, he's got longer hair in the front. <laughs> Not necessarily, 
just as many strands. strands, probably just shorter and longer, <laughs> just longer. So it can a nice flap, a nice, a nice, a nice, uh, a nice comb over. And, um, and America, America likes blonde and not silver. <laughs> Of blonde. It's kind of a little orangey. Oh, right. It's, it's a little color. orangey. I want to hear. Did I see that there was anime? Is that the right? Is that Definitely. the right genre of? Ah, yeah, you did. I'm so glad that you asked that. Is that did it, did I see it right? Anime, yes, absolutely. There's a place called Funimation in my hometown, Dallas, and they make all sorts of English dubs and subs for anime. Mm-hmm. Cartoons, mm-hmm. and yeah. I got into that. I got into that industry from the theater. There turned out to not be any black men in Dallas in the anime mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. and they were making a Brazilian show. And ah, Brazilian Japanese. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And so the Brazilians were dark enough where they needed a a bunch of folks. And so they had found all women and not any men. Mm, mm. Um, and so I kind of came in and played the only gangster in the show. Um, <laughs> I was like, I was a you can't get away from it. <laughs> I can't get away. You from play it. any good guys? They keep pulling you back in. <laughs> no, you were the I gangster. I played Tom Robinson once. I played Tom Robinson in Tom Robinson? Robinson. Oh, in Kill My- yeah. He's a good guy. <laughs> he's, he's a good guy. <laughs> I already got that on your belt. No, uh, the, the and two- we're, we're running on to the end of our segment, but no, do you have any other no, no, questions? No, 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 any no, other no. issues um, you want to bring up? Because there's well, so many, obviously. Well, I want to um, I want to really ask about your role as Mr. Mm-hmm. And um, we're, we're like what, bang up job you did. I wh- heard. I, <laughs> what what do you draw <laughs> from? Like, what it was interesting? It was interesting in that particular cast since we were just talking about ages of the like, I was I originally played Bobby <laughs> in the Broadway show, and so I was thirty at the time and right. booked Bobby, and Bobby's like the young guy in the show. Um, you don't really know how old he is, but if you remember at the end when when Celie has gone through everything with Mister and she sings this big powerful song, and then this young plumber comes out mm-hmm. with sweat on his chest, and you know, <laughs> and, giving, and, giving her the look. <laughs> oh my God, giving her the look and like staring at butt live mm-hmm. stage. Mm-hmm. Nobody's aware. Um, and then he picks up his tools <laughs> and he leaves. Well, I created that <laughs> that role on Broadway. And then what? I got a chance to see the guy play Mr. His name was Isaiah Johnson, who I found out was like two years older than me at the time. Wow. But um, mm-hmm. he was just slaying it as Mr. Every single night against Cynthia Erivo and Daniel, mm-hmm. Daniel Brooks and mm-hmm. Jennifer Hudson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that was inspiration. And of course, Danny Glover was inspiration. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, from the original, but also my mentorship just rang me up as soon as they saw I was playing it and was like, so don't, don't, don't excuse my language. Don't bullshit yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and they were real with me. They said, you know, the, and these are, the, again, these are older black people, you know, and they were like, mm-hmm. it's not about him beating those women. Right. Somebody told him that he had a small penis and he yes. is making up for it every <laughs> single day. <laughs> And you took that thought. You took that thought and said, "Okay." I don't I know what that well, feels I have, like. I have a big, I, I have a big whip. I have a big whip and a little penis. Okay. So, but here's what, and and I attribute this to you because I didn't have this feeling about any other, whether it was a movie or any any other time of the many times I've seen. Um, the depiction of you know the 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 book where i saw mister's humanity as much as i saw in your portrayal of the character 
Um, I and maybe it's because I, you know, I had the opportunity to, to see you perform every night and during rehearsals and so on. But there were so then many. You also times... got to know him in the background as a well, person. Well, 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 no, because we didn't really start connecting until um, probably a few shows in to mm -hmm. um, the you know, the performances at the theater. But this, these are the things that I mentioned that I, that I noticed that made me start to believe that there was, um, there was another side to him because it, it did not come from anything he said or any way that he, that was kind of dominant in, in the role. But what I saw um, Akron doing um, is um, how, how you looked away, what you looked like when you turned your head away from, you know, there was one point where you were um, going to either strike Nettie or um, or Celia, I forget which one, because you swung at both of them. Um, and when you turned your head, um, and I saw you in character, I didn't see you as, as Akron, but I saw that you were hurting yourself by doing that, like it affected you when Ooh, you allow really? that yeah i'm telling you this guy is listen <laughs> he, i'm telling you and was... um some of the more obvious things when um when buster came out and he was kind of doing his jabs when you when you kind of ducked uh, even though he was some distance away from you just little things that um your voice when you came out and uh it's gonna make me cry really wow. um i'm sorry i don't know where this is coming from but um you know i was really touched by your by your acting and what it, it what it reminded me of is is what redemption is you know what i mean how um how um people when they're taken out of the the treadmill the rat race the the template the script the this is how i'm supposed to be how um like fundamental forever change can happen mm. and that's what that's why <laughs> that's why i'm getting so emotional uh -huh. is because that is what i saw and saw and saw you you really like and that blew me away yeah. blew me I, away i just i think i i really thank my creator i get an opportunity to be uh like a vessel for some of the men that i have known mm -hmm. because they are constantly calling and pouring into me either mm. verbally or you know from the from the other either and like i don't feel like someone like mister is alone in the world mm. and so there's no reason to not play him as a human right and i know for a fact in that time period you've been we're just different and so mm. he was trying to be a newer version of his father mm -hmm. and then trying to teach his son to be a newer version of him right, right. and he was right. blessed honestly to be able to come back in that last scene and say look we've lived a whole life i've yeah. really, really 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 messed up mm -hmm. but i know that mm -hmm. and i'm sorry yeah and that's all the work. Like it's, it seems like all the work to get to that point in life yeah. and in that show yeah. mm. is to be like, I have done so many messed up things. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm trying to encourage myself to get there sooner. I'm trying yeah. to get there now. <laughs> yeah. That's like true repentance. Yeah. You know, I want, the Bible talks about sincere mm -hmm. yeah. repentance. Mm -hmm. That that wisdom, I wanted to, I you know, and I know that I can't know the future, but if there was one thing I could make, it be a time machine. I want to go forward and figure out where I mess up, what I do. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to not to be <laughs> yeah, this man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, oh. You know, I'd look up and see my fathers and, and father's fathers and his father. 
in the audience. I think I started off again. I was like, oh, I see, I see old Mister looking at me like, look at you, you dumb, you know. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and that, and then, you, and then, and then you try to do the thing that he didn't do, right. but you end up hitting her anyway. You end up right. hitting her anyway. And it, and, and so yeah. that's what makes you turn away and be like, God. I said, yes. I said I wouldn't do this. Right. That, that is what, that is what you, that's what that yeah. face was. That was the unspoken thing that I saw oh, you do every night. Wow. It's like, you know, damn I it. Like I, I just, there. I said I wasn't going to do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. the struggle, yeah. the human struggle. Mm-hmm. The human struggle, not the, not yeah. the, not the bad guy struggle, the human struggle. But the right, human struggle. Right. Yeah, yeah. That we all have on some level. Thank that's God beautiful. I ain't hitting people though. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> yet, 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 So, um, wow. Akron, can you... Um, and sh- we're going to need to close, I'm sorry to I say. know, I know. <laughs> can you tell our guests how they can um, follow you, keep in touch with you, for, um, yeah. you know... And we're benefit- also going to put that in our notes, too. So yeah, we're but, but go give ahead. them good uh, information it, on how to reach you. It's just at Akron Watson everywhere. At Akron Watson everywhere. Wherever, wherever wow. there is aware, that's where you are. Where, okay. Wherever there is aware, it's just at Akron Watson. Got it. Awesome. Got it. Got it. Awesome. We thank you What's so much. What's next for you? May I ask? I'm doing a show called Grace. I'm developing a new musical called Grace. We're going to do it in Orlando first and then do it off Broadway. And it's coming. It's just about a black family sitting down at dinner and what ensues from there. Wow. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> when does it open? Uh, we open in Florida probably next season. I'm just I'm going to Orlando now, first of all, to get away from New York. And secondly, <laughs> to just just work on some new music. We're gonna sing some of the music, meet some castmates. We probably won't go up for another year. We'll have two more of these. That's how the industry works. We'll have two more of these workshops, three week mm-hmm. workshops before we open. Okay. Okay. Well beautiful. I'll be Please at- um uh, Akron Watson. Keep us updated on yeah, yeah, what's going you on. Keep in touch. You're 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 in the bestie in the bestie gang now. Yeah. I'm so excited to possibly take one of the besties on the date. <laughs> Right, See that's yeah. that's another thing that um, we may have you back because we want to talk about <laughs> older women, younger men. Um, that date. We'll, we'll have you back. We'll have you back for Perfect. sure. Thank for you. Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you later. All All right. Right. For you, this was another episode of Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Peace out. Bye guys. Peace out. Bye.